Usually, we believe that the lower the price is, you know, lower the piracy. Okay? In this case, we are taking prices of a basic necessity up to levels where people simply cannot afford it. Do you expect theft to rise or fall? While there is no shortage of problems in Pakistan uh, right now, the power crisis has, um, is, is treated as an enormous problem which is leading to further uh, issues in Pakistan. Now, to understand the power crisis, you need to go back to 1992, where the new power policy was put into place. Before 1992, basically between 1950s and 1992, um, all the power uh, was generated in the public sector in Pakistan. There were two uh, organizations. One was called WAPTA, or the Water and Power Development uh, Authority. The other was KESC, uh, the Karachi Electric Supply Corporation. And uh, between them, they took care of the power needs in Pakistan. They had installed uh, hydro um, uh, plants, uh, you know, in many cases large dams. They had installed thermal uh, plants. And they also had a couple of nuclear uh, plants. Uh, in 1992, it was, um, it was deemed by the government that the demand was going to uh, outstrip supply uh, in the coming years. So capacity needed to be added to um, uh, the power generation system. However, instead of expanding capacity in the public sector, they decided to take this opportunity to privatize um, the sector. Now, privatization in itself is not a bad thing, or always uh, a bad thing. Uh, except that there are two or three considerations that we must keep in mind when privatizing uh, a particular sector. So the first one is, what is the competitive scenario going to be? So in this particular case, the policy that was put into place did not really pit power plants against each other. So there was essentially no competition uh, between them, which means that there is no reward for better management, for innovation, for efficiency, uh, because they were guaranteed the returns that they were going to get on their equity, uh, the independent power producers. There was enormous uh, enthusiasm uh, from the international investors because, frankly, they had never seen a policy like this. The policy promised them about 18% annual returns in dollar terms uh, guaranteed on their equity. It also allowed them to take up to 80% debt and the government would be the one, or the tax, Pakistani taxpayer would be the one who would be financing that debt too. And this was regardless whether they were asked to produce any electricity or not. So you really couldn't lose. And this was a 25-year deal uh, in most cases. So the first, plus this policy was fuel blind, okay? which means that you could essentially take, um, you know, start making electricity from any kind of fuel and the government will pay all your costs. Hydel is the cheapest source of making electricity. So depending on which plants you compare, you know, it could be two to three times or two to, you know, in many cases, uh, five times cheaper than, uh, than oil. Plus, oil prices were about $20, you know, a barrel at the time. And in about, uh, you know, more than a decade, they rose to about $140 a barrel. Now, the government had taken on itself to meet all costs, all operational costs, including fuel. Okay? So this was, this was really you know, a huge error and a policy failure. Now, one thing is the type of policy. So there was no competition that was taking place between the international power plants. Now, the private sector only delivers through competition because it is through competition that value gets passed on to the consumer. If there is no competition, I fail to see what value private sector is going to be adding because there is really little incentive for them to be uh, efficient. As a result of the power policy, you know, um, the power pipeline for electricity got choked by something that is popularly known in Pakistan as circular debt, which means that if you, who is the consumer of electricity, is not paying the distribution company, they cannot pay uh, the generation company, and they in turn cannot pay you know, the oil companies and so on and so forth. There are a number of different stakeholders, and the whole thing, it's all, almost like a liquidity crunch in the banking sector. It is very important to really understand the true nature of circular debt. Yeah, because it, the popular discourse or the dominant discourse is that the circular debt has accumulated because of non-bill payment. 
because of subsidies in the system there. Now, take subsidies first. If I ask you, and this is an example that people in Pakistan will be uh, familiar with, if I ask you to set up a sugar making plant, okay, and I promise to pay you 100 rupees per kilo, and then uh, when your cost of making one kilo of sugar is about 20 rupees. Yeah. Then I sell that uh, sugar on to the people for 80 rupees a kilo. Yeah. And I tell them that I am subsidizing them because I am not making them pay 100 rupees. Who is being subsidized here? The people or you? So in this case, they allowed prices to rise to these exorbitant levels. And of course, you know, no people in, um, in, in any developing country would be able to pay those kinds of prices. So it was almost inevitable that these things uh, would develop. Now, take the other uh, issue of non-bill payment. If you want piracy to reduce in a particular sector, should you be taking the price of the original good higher or lower to discourage piracy? There are long-term solutions and there are short-term solutions. And uh, long-term solution simply is that we need to change the fuel mix. Right now, about 30% of the electricity comes from oil, which is hugely expensive for a country like Pakistan, which does not produce oil. Uh, about 30% comes from gas. We have dwindling reserves of gas. And the rest comes from, um, essentially, uh, hydel. We need to take the share of hydel and coal. Uh, Pakistan has coal reserves, which are estimated to be the fourth largest in the world. And yet, only 0.1% of electricity in Pakistan is coming from coal. So where have the governments been for the last 20 or 30 years? Um, why haven't they developed more hydro capacity? Why haven't they developed coal you know, as an alternative source of? Plus, solar. Pakistan is the Saudi Arabia of solar energy. There's so much sun out there. How come we are not investing in developing solar? the way we should be. Similarly, we, had, uh, we have um, uh, wind corridors in Pakistan. And how come they are not being developed? So the long-term solution is to change the fuel mix, but not just the, fuel, the energy mix. It is also to change the regulatory regime under which the sector um, functions. So, and that also um, can become a short-term solution, of course, if the contracts are renegotiated with the IPPs, because this situation is simply unsustainable, and it will lead to a lot more social and political unrest in the country. So if that is what uh, the policymakers want, then fine, they're going, going about it the right way. But if that is not something that is desirable, then something needs to be done about these contracts right now.